www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. The next time you men just think about bullets banging into you, tonight we're going to bang a bullet bang into your heart and to your chest. That you can't shrug it off. They will come back and they'll curse you, they'll haunt you, and they'll prey upon you every single day when you go back on road to make you think that what bullets am I taking in my daily life? What am I doing in my life? What's my purpose in life? You think we create you out of vanity, no purpose, that you just walk around? all about on the streets that's not how as, as Muslims should become to begin to live a life like that a fab lifestyle what they talk about the gangster lifestyle what's wrong with our society you know every time these things happen you know what we blame we, we blame society we said it was society's fault it's society I said it's not society society doesn't force you to do things Allah gives you and me a choice. Every time you do something, Allah gives you a choice. And it is up to you to do it or to leave it. When you pick up that cigarette and you put it in your mouth and you're about to drag it, has society said you better smoke? Society never said you should smoke. That is your choice. When you pick up a gun and you're about to shoot somebody, it's in your hands. What part of society tells you to shoot somebody? Allah gives you and me that choice. There is a lot of pimps, man. Grow up with you, racketeering and prostitution. Filth, that's what you are. You're a scum, bruv. You're a scum holding spit on your face. My saliva's worth more than that. You think you're a bad boy. That's how low you've become. You know, you look at our lives. Who have we made our role model? Every other Tom, Dick and Harry we made our role models. The way they tell you to behave is how we behave. We spend more time watching X Factor than reading the seal of the Prophet wasallam. They tell you, you know, wear high heels, you wear high heels. They tell you wear low heels, you wear low heels. They tell you wear baggies, you wear baggies. They tell you wear tight, you wear tight. They tell you the Palestinian scarf is in fashion and then you start wearing the Palestinian scarf. Rose, the cause. They tell you, you know, wear your trousers halfway up your backside, you wear your trousers halfway up your backside. I mean, who, does, who wants to see the color of your jetty anyway? No, seriously, have some self respect. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when your haya died, first nama shit, then you will do whatever you wish. You walk around with your jeans halfway down your backside, where's your haya gone? But you do what they tell you to do. Haram things that most Muslim youth are doing that sometimes we begin to shy away from. The first thing that we find is alcohol. Has it not become unfortunately a common trend that Muslim youth they drink alcohol, whatever the names may be whiskey, brandy, rum, vodka, beers, whatever it may be. Common practice that Muslims get drunk, get legless, don't, can't find their way home. Abuse other Muslims while they're making their way home. At least some people need to drink, they should drink in secrecy. Drink in the privacy of their own homes. But now we find that people out in the open, behaving like disbelievers. But if some Muslims may say, well, you know, I don't drink alcohol. I take some substances. I smoke drugs. Told me in the Quran, where Allah said, the Quran that cocaine, crack, smack, weed, skunk, marijuana, spliff, reefer, dope, white lady, 
Cole, Smoke, Brown, Charlie, whatever name you want. People say to me, give it to me from the Quran and I'll give it up today in my life. Give me these words from the Quran, I'll give it up in my life. Because it doesn't exist in the Quran. That's what they're trying to say. Well, for your information, it does exist inside the Quran. The Quran mentions quite clearly the verse that I mentioned, Innam al Khamar. Khamar isn't alcohol. That's a loose translation. The meaning of Khamar according to Sharia is Ma Ghab al Aqal. Whatever intoxicates you in your language, whatever rushes you, stones you, buzzes you, trips you, makes you feel good, raises you, is haram. Full stop. The Sharia says that if it takes away your mind, it covers your mind, it shrouds your mind, takes away your senses, finish. End of story. Man wants to come to me and say to me, but Sheikh, you know, I don't take so much of this stuff. I only take a small spliff to keep me mellow like Bob Marley used to take me, keep me controlled and focused. We don't do no man no harm. But they create schizophrenia. That's what it does, split personality. But obviously this becomes common normal practice for us because for us, because I'm a big daddy, isn't it? I'm a big daddy if I move the kilos, the keys, isn't it? I'm a big daddy, that's who I am. You don't pick up bone with me. Like I said, the bullets I'm going to come with are different bullets. That's the bullets I'm going to come with, you're going to think about it for the rest of your life. The people who take drugs, they like to come and say, well, I only take small amounts to keep me mellow, keep me focused. I don't get stoned. So it must be halal for me. So they think we're some type of fools. That's what they think, to play games with us. Whatever stones you in large amounts, becomes haram in small amounts. The Sharia doesn't look that for you. I drink balance of beer and then I get drunk. Or I take a kilo of crack and then I get, well you won't get drunk, you'll be probably doze out your mind. Hallucination, jumping off some building or something. Sharia doesn't say pick you and say you're, you're free. The Sharia says whatever in large amount intoxicates you, is forbidden in small amounts, finish. That the Sharia has maqasid, has purposes, five general purposes. To protect your mind, your body, your soul, your faith, your wealth, your honor, your dignity. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something halal, look at it. It benefits your life, benefits your wealth, benefits your honor, benefits your dignity, benefits your religion, benefits your mind. Anything that's made haram in the Sharia, look what it does to you. Destroys your wealth, destroys your honor. Man taking heroin, lying on the floor like a dog. Addicted to heroin, lying on the floor, picking up cigarette butts, chewing them because he's become a staggered. That's how low our community's fallen down. We see your own brothers falling on the floor, picking up small cigarette butts, begging from another Muslim to go get another rap to inject themselves. A man wants to drive by in his flash car and think, yeah, I'm a big boy. When some people are serving these substances, there's a cone of behavior. Never serve it up to another Muslim. Never ever in your life. Go down a long way. Go down a long way, but never ever get your own blood addicted to it. We've crossed over the rules. We've crossed over the boundary. Some of us, we think we're gangsters. Read about the gangster world. But obviously we turn and look at people like the Scarface. Muslim boys walking about with a picture of Scarface with a zoo in his mouth. But what was the end of this individual? What's the end of all these individuals begins to take place inside their life? We begin to praise them, look up to them. That this is my lifestyle. Live by the gun, die by the gun. That's what some of us we think, isn't it? The gangster rap culture as well. Listen to these people. Man walking with his trousers hanging below his bottom. Think he's Tupac Amaru Shakur. Amaru means what? The shining serpent. That shining serpent is where now? Wrapped right round his mouth. All eyes on me now, isn't it, Tupac? I get around, isn't it? Damn hell you get around. Gunned down, 1996, four times a drive-by shooting. That's how some of us begin to think, isn't it? Listening to this, isn't it? All begins with people like NWA, niggas with an attitude, public enemy, ice T, ice cube coming back with all these other artists that begin to exist 
Muslim, they think they're black. At least a black man, a Jamaican Yadi, language man. He's grown up in that language. He speaks Yadi because he's a Yadi. Since when have you been a Yadi, cutting your teeth, going dreads, wearing a Rasta vest? Since when? Since when's that been your culture? That's man's culture. That's his lifestyle. That's how he conduct, conducts himself. You ain't no Jamaican Yadi. And when you pick beef with Jamaican Yadi, you know what happens to you anyway. You get put in your place and you drive back to your streets around here, don't you? Don't travel out to Hanworth and deal with the situation, do you? Put your head down and drive back where you belong. Stay in your manor, you little boy. You ain't no bad boy if that's what you think. Because there's always going to be a badder boy than you out there. That's the reality. You're worried about your life. That's what you're worried about, that next man's going to gun me down. Why is next man going to gun you down? Because you jacked this, he jacked that. Jacking each other. Forget about Trident, black on black crime. We've got now Muslim on Muslim crime. Police investigating amongst ourselves. Turf wars about drugs taking place. There is a lot of pimps, man. Grew up with you. Racketeering and prostitution. Fool, that's what you are. You're a scum, bruv. You're a scum holding spit on your face. My saliva's worth more than that. You think you're a bad boy. That's how low you've become. Racketeering these substances. Getting your old Muslim youth addicted to it. Remember this one message in your life. Don't forget about that next man out there searching for you, looking for you. Think about those people you got addicted to these substances. I don't often get up and pray at night. That's my downfall. But I tell you one thing. If I knew somebody in my family got offered drugs because of you, and I know who you are, I'll make sure I get up every single night and I'll curse you till the day I die. And that's what a lot of mothers are doing upon you every single night. Remember those words. Every day you've been trafficking drugs inside this community, there's a poor mother out there who gets up every single night and says, made that person die a dog's death. Who got my son, my daughter addicted to this crap, this junk. So that curse, that gun, that bullet of that mother stays with you for the rest of your life. And likewise, the other fahisha that we find, some young brothers come and say, well, I don't drink. I don't take drugs. I don't traffic them. I don't even listen to gangster rap, whatever it may be. Not that I do. Alhamdulillah, research, you have to listen to these snippets to understand what's taking place in a society, isn't it? DMX, flesh in my flesh, blood in my blood, hell is hot. Damn hell, hell is hot, isn't it? Man follow, suffers from bipolar, depression or whatever he suffers from. Or 50 cents. Is it you look up to him, he's rich, get rich or die trying? Is it because man got shot nine times? So you're going to look up to him? You have to use the expression, some of us will think that, we're, that we are, that I'm a nigger. N-I-G-G-A. You know what they say about rap about it? Not ignorant, getting goals accomplished. Isn't it? So they try to justify it. Do you understand? It's not a rudimentary statement. We're now adding glamour to it, man. It's all about cream, isn't it? What's cream? Look at what cream means. Cash rules everything around me. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Rap about that, isn't it? And what do their mums say when they rap about that? Boy, you never lived in no shanty town, in no hut, and had no food, and you just start serving crap to get by? Is that what they said about who is it? Biggie, isn't it? Notorious, wasn't he? What happened to Biggie six months later after Tupac Amaru Shakur? Got gunned down as well four times. I wonder who gunned him down. He was notorious, wasn't he? And his mum said he never lived in no shanty town. He had damn good food given to him. And my man raps about it to serve up crack to get by. It's a fake image. And Muslim youth want to look up to that and think, yeah, that's me. Boy, there ain't no Muslim youth who's going to reach that level. Man sits in his cell weeping away. Jeff, get me out of here, bruv. <laughs> bruv, you got yourself in here. You're a man out there, ride your sentence like a man. Ride it like a man all the way then. There's some people out there that I've met in my life, who've even said someone taken a man's life, may even be for justified reasons. You say to them, you feel any sorrow about what you've done? You say, don't feel any sorrow at all. Some of them are real men, ride it all the way. But some of us, when we go there, we think we're the big Don Teflon, isn't it? What's taking place in our community at the moment, the turf wars, the violence, the crime, 
Don't you think that these people don't know what's going on? I'm a no one, and I'm telling you now, give me 10 minutes in Adam Rock, and I'll give you the names and the places of all the big traffickers in this community. So you're telling me 5 -0 don't know who's who? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That 5 -0 don't know who's doing what? Of course they know. But the way they see it, they, we see it in East London, it's Muslims are Muslims. Let them battle it out. Let them carry on whatever they're doing. They're destroying their own race, their own people, their own culture, their own identity. That's what they're doing. But the other thing that we want to mention is some young boys. That you know, I love guns. Isn't it? That's what man says. Oh, there's nothing haram about that. What's haram about that shit? It's a normal way of life. Where do you live? What's happened to you? A woman says that, you know, even you got these Muslims in the disguise that what's wrong with free mixing, what's wrong with people having a good time going to a mela and enjoying themselves. What's wrong with that? You know, I don't feel no inclinations towards women. I just go there and enjoy myself. You're a liar, brother. That's what you are. You got people serving sentences and they come and say, Sheikh, you know, you got some weird friends. At least we're banged up in prison writing a sentence because we've done some haram in our life, you know, we, we're guilty. But your man, one minute he's praying, next minute he's telling me how to jab the system. He's giving me passports and driving license and this, that and the other. I don't understand him. I'm a criminal, I admit I'm a criminal. I don't pray, I don't fast, I don't mix the two together. I don't be religious one minute and next minute I'm tracking down the system or break, so-called breaking the system. Make up your mind. If you're a criminal, be a criminal. If you're a mullah, be a mullah. Don't link the two up together, give mixed messages. Walk away from it. First thing that man loves is women. Have you ever thought about why is the Quran saying right at the beginning, man loves women? That's what man loves. Then wealth, then property, the land, and branded horses. You know what today's branded horses in today's language? cars. You know what car? Ferrari. What's the logo on a Ferrari? The stallion, the horse. Look at the language of the Quran. Still serves us today. No man still love his ride. And most of these young boys living in flats walk past and I see a hundred thousand pound Ferrari and look up, look at the car, look at the flat and I think, boy, you trying to tell me that you done some good work. You may, you may fool your local Imam and say, yeah, you know, I done, you ain't done a day's work in your life. You ain't done a day's work in your life. And you're trying to tell me that Sheikh, I work hard for my money. That's right. You work hard for your money, don't you? That money ain't worth anything. That this lifestyle is not acceptable. This way of life, this behavior, these characteristics, it's not the way. It's not for us Muslims. Look at us today. What's happening to, to our people? What's happening to our youngsters? The Young Offenders Institutes and Juvenile Prisons. They have more youngsters that are Muslim than any other population. That how many parents must be outside having to live with the fact of knowing that their son or daughter is behind bars, not being fed properly, not being clothed properly. How are you going to live your life where you have no access to your family, to your loved ones, to your children, to absolutely nobody apart from your lawyer. The only access you've got to somebody outside is your lawyer. And if somebody comes to visit you maybe once a month. So I asked this question to my congregation. And I said to them, I said, guys, tell me, do you feel like you have achieved anything? And believe me, some of these guys were the biggest gangsters in Birmingham. Some of these guys, when they would walk the streets, people would make salam. Look who's here. And they'd have all these wonderful gangster names. Crack, Yak, MG. What crew are you from? I'm the Spartans. 
What grew you from? It reminds me of a story I once I was teaching in Maktab years ago, and there was this one little child. He had a little confrontation, he had a little confrontation with another child, and they were arguing, and he said, What, you're going to hit me? So that child goes to him, No, I'm going to let you off. He goes, You touch me, I'll tell my uncle on you. So he goes, Yeah, what's your uncle going to do? He goes, Don't you know who my uncle is? He's from the MMK. And I'm sitting there listening to this child, and he's like, MMK. And I'm like, What the hell's an MMK? So I, once they finish their little thing, I call both of them. I said, what's MMK? He goes, multi-mafia Muslim crew. I was like, what? I said, you're missing the M. He goes, yeah, that one's, that's a hidden one. That's like, we don't tell people about that. He goes, if they ask us, we just say MMK because it sounds true. You know what M M M K? Sounds better, it's snappy. I go, okay, so what does your uncle do? He goes, oh, he drives an X5. And he just goes around chilling all day. You know, and if anybody messes about, then he's there to sort it out. Wow, what a life, what a life Allah has given you, man. You know, you, Allah has given you a life, Allah has given you health, wealth. And what do you do? You drive an X5 or a Q7 and you're the biggest gangster there is. You know, tint your windows, pump a bit of bass and that's it. And every time you go past somebody, what do you do? You put the window down. Now honestly, it's reality. Now have a look at our streets. When you're driving up and down them, if you're not one of them yourself, who's doing it? Is everybody second cousin and first cousin and brother and uncle and this friend and that friend? And most of the time, if it's not yourself, you're either sitting in that car with them. Because we start to respect these people. We start to respect these people and look at them as if they're something in society. And we start to idolize these people. So somebody has a fight in the street and everybody's on their toes. Oh, you heard this guy knocked him out. He was sick fight. And then we go home and talk about, oh, he's hard man, mashallah. You know, he pumps this much amount of iron. So he's like this, he's like that. Oh, and what a punch it was, you know, it was a hook. And it was just one only and he knocked him out. So what now? He's a don. Right? So he's now a don. So what do we do? Whenever a fight, oh, we better call him. And if you've got, you got his number in your mobile phone, then you're a gangster too. Because he's one phone call away. So somebody comes, or you walk into a shop and you think, yeah, yeah, you think you're bad. All right, safe. So put my phone out. And you call him up. And this is the lifestyle we live. And wallahi, it brings shame upon us. And you think at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set a rule. And that rule was that you love your neighbors. That is a part of your responsibility in society. That you ensure that other people stay safe from your hands and your tongue. And the way you interact with people. And your social characteristics. But we have become animal-like. We have become literally animals. In fact, Allah says, Bal hum adal. And I think sometimes, even though Allah refers to others and the non-Muslims, we bring ourselves into that category. We are worse than animals. We are ashamed to call one another brother. We do it with lip service, but we're ashamed of it in reality. And if you ask yourself, is this what Islam bought? Is this what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized? Is this what Allah talks about in the Quran? We are total opposite. What is all this about? Is it that the one who box the highest is the one who is the most hardest? Or tell me, what is it? Am I missing something? Or is it that if you swing your body to the left and the right a bit more, that you're practicing reflexes? Because I don't see it. But what is it? What is it that we're doing? These are men who spend the whole of their life and dedicate every minute of their life to be like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And here's you and me wanting to be gangsters and bopping every time we walk. And then I ask you, who are you walking like? Who is it? You don't even know yourself who it is. You just think it's cool. So if I asked you who are you walking like? You could never give me a comparison because no idiot even walks like that. It's just something in your head and you think how un-Islamic it is. 
The etiquette of the Prophet ﷺ, when you were walking the streets, he would stop and give salam to the children, he would stop and give salam to the elders, he would stop and give salam to everyone. And here's you and me so busy swinging your arms, you're lucky you haven't hit the guy behind you, even though he's a mile behind you. And you start to wonder where we're going with our life, where are we heading? Let me tell you where the gangsters end up. They end up in a six by seven little box. And in it lies a bed with a mattress half the size of the one that you probably sleep on now. And if you're a nice rich man, then it's probably a quarter of your mattress. There's a toilet in there. And every morning when he brushes his teeth, he looks into the reflection that he receives from some silver paint that was left on a piece of wood. He's not even allowed to keep his toothbrush or his teeth in his own room, in his cell. He has to leave that outside. When he runs out of toilet roll, he has to wait and put an application in to get another toilet roll. Okay, when he feels hungry, he hasn't got a microwave or a fridge to open. He opens a can of tuna, puts a bit of pickle in it, puts it in a bread and eats it. This is the paradise that every gangster gets. And that is the paradise that Allah keeps for people like that. You want to be a gangster, or you aspire to be like one, or you think they're cool and they're big and they're bad. Wallahi, come with me, I'll show you how much of a gangster they are now. You know, once people go behind bars, it's all over. That's 10 years of, of certain people's lives. That's 15 years of people's lives, gone in a flash. And there's nothing he can do about it. Nothing at all. And you think about it. As a gangster, what did he achieve? Yeah, he had a strap of a gun around him somewhere. He popped a few pills maybe here and there, snorted and smoked. What else did he do with his life? So what has he done? He's messed his own life up. He's living in a seven by six. That's the type of area that they have. I'm asking you, is this what people want to achieve in life? Is that even a goal? What's wrong with you and me? What's wrong with our society? You know, every time these things happen, you know what we blame? We, we blame society. We say that it was society's fault. It's society. I say it's not society. Society doesn't force you to do things. Allah gives you and me a choice. Every time you do something, Allah gives you a choice. And it is up to you to do it or to leave it. When you came to the masjid today, did society tell you to come to the masjid? When you go to school for education, does society tell you you gotta go there? You could skive. When you go to university, does society tell you go to university? Of course it doesn't. It's your choice. When you pick up that cigarette and you put it in your mouth and you're about to drag it, has society said you better smoke? Society never said you should smoke. That is your choice. When you pick up a gun and you're about to shoot somebody, it's in your hands. What part of society tells you to shoot somebody? Allah gives you and me that choice. And our problem is, we look for an excuse to blame somebody else. If it's not society, you blame your parents. If it's not your parents, you blame your friends. And let me tell you, when it comes to your friends, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran clearly, He says, people on the day of judgment will come in front of Allah. And they will say that, oh Allah, woe be unto me that I took this person as my friend, as my Khalid. For he made me forget about the message that you had sent. And what message are we talking about? We're talking about the Quran. These people will come in front of Allah and they'll have no excuse. And you, and you ask a person about their friends and their boys today. People are ready to die for these people. Go and sit in prison for a week and see how many of your boys come to visit you. Go and fight a cake, a, you know, court case and see who comes to pay for it. Your friends are your friends. They're never more than that. It's clear. Hazrat Umar says, That a man is upon the way of his friend. So be careful whenever one of you choose your friends. And nowadays, what is it? It's all about the boys. It's all about the boys. Ask the youngsters. 
It's all about the boys and the gangs and you know, oh he's one of my boys. Yeah, he's one of your boys. Like I said, go and sit in prison and have a look how many of your boys come to visit you. I had a brother from around this area actually, he was a revert to this dean. And he came to me on one eve and he was upset. He goes, I can't believe it because this is my second time in prison. And he goes, you know what, they couldn't even send me an Eid card. Boys, boys, these were his boys. They didn't have that much inside them to send him an Eid card. And we were ready to die for these people. We sacrifice everything for these people. To such an extent, we sacrifice our parents for these guys. You and me, we do this all the time. You know what? Your mom might ask you to do something. You're like, you know what? Mom, I'm, I'm busy. I'm with next uh, whoever in Muhammad. Or I'm going out with somebody. I'm going here. Or mom, I've got plans. And you're ready to go with your boys. This is the life that we live. People are married nowadays. They have children and wives and they're at home and a guy comes and bumps the horn outside. He's gone in a jiffy. He didn't even look back. Some people don't need to do this. Some people just like to hang out with their boys. But how can you do this when you disrespect those who love you the most? I asked those same people. I said, guys, where are your boys? They're like, we don't have any boys. And you know what they said to me? They said the only people that supported us through our sentence was our parents. Subhanallah. The only people. So it was that same old man who you used to hate. The man you had no time for. That came to your court cases. That paid for your legal stuff. That came and supported you. That sent you post orders when you didn't have a penny to your name. And you think about your friends. Who are these people? You know, one expensive rule of life, I'll tell you today. Keep your friends as friends. Friends will always remain friends. You know this word, best friend, is un-Islamic. Best friends, that's an un-Islamic term. And I'll tell you why it's un-Islamic. Friends are always friends. Brothers are always brothers. Family are always family. Your friends are just your friends. Love your friends, okay? But don't over love them. Love them because that's a part of our deen. If, you're, if you have a friend who's a Muslim and you love him for the sake of Allah, that's brilliant. That's what you should be doing. But if you have a friend, you love him for the sake of Allah, he's your best friend, and then he goes up beyond that. Have you seen when two best friends quarrel, what happens? Have you seen what happens? They become the worst of enemies. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fact mentioned this to us over 1400 years ago. You know these gangster friends you have, these gangster people you want to be like, what are you doing ultimately? You are disrespecting your father and your mother. Your father and your mother. Who are these people? Who are these people? I'm not, I don't even need to stand here and tell you from Quran and Sunnah. Because the fact is, they're your parents, regardless of what Allah has said, regardless of what Rasulullah has said, you must love them. There is no excuse. Why should somebody have to tell you that Allah has commanded you to love your parents? What are you so stupid that you can't even see that these people are to be respected? You only came to dunya because of these people. And what, have you forgotten the times when you were young and you were children? Every time that they picked you up when you cried, every time they fed you when you were hungry, every time when you were excreet, that smell would be love to them. But do we have to remind you that Allah said something about this? That you and I don't have enough common sense to remember that these people should be loved. Tell me, do I have to tell you from hadith? What the Prophet said about parents. Do I really have to do this? You know, every individual realizes once they become parents, what it's like. Unfortunately though, the tables switch. Because when you have your own children, you start loving them. And you forget about the love that your parents gave you when you were a child. And I'm asking you what, you're ready to sacrifice that? For your friends to be a wannabe gangster, to be a part of the E17 crew. Well, you're ready to, to sacrifice that for what? 
for the 657 cell. In the same room you have to sleep and you have to excrete. You're ready to sacrifice that to be one of them. To show me one gangster in the history of humanity that ever achieved something. Show me just one gangster, one only. You can't even show me half of one because they weren't even men. Because if they were real men, they wouldn't carry bullets on them. They wouldn't be walking around with knives. They wouldn't be there looking for trouble. A real man is that man who stands in front of Allah Azza wa Jal whilst every other human being is sleeping. A real man is that man when he becomes, he becomes angry, he controls his anger. A real man is that man who looks out for his brother, not kills his brother. That's a real man. And we talk about gangsters, we watch TV and we think, wow, look at this guy. Everybody loves him because he can rap and he sings. Well, everybody likes him and he's been shot nine times. He's like a cat. Let him be like a cat. What difference does that make to you and me? And you know what I'm talking about. There ain't no gangsters in paradise, brothers. Let me tell you that now clearly. There are no gangsters in paradise. You want paradise, you want to live and die for the sake of Allah. You know these same gangsters. You know when these cartoons and those issues took place, it was the same gangsters, the wannabes that came to the streets to protest. I haven't got an issue with protesting. What I'm saying is, it was all good you came to protest. Because what were you doing? Because you're a gangster, you're defending the honor of the Prophet wasallam. When you yourself couldn't honor the Prophet wasallam by even growing a beard, when you couldn't honor the deen by standing and praying Fajr Salah, you know what? I would have loved to ask those people. I would have loved to ask those people. How many of you even know what a Sunnah is? Let alone honor the Prophet wasallam by going on a protest. We don't need people like this. When the issue of Palestine comes up, what happens? Everybody's on their heels, oh, let's go and sort it out. Let's go and do a protest. You can't even pray your salah. You can't even read Quran properly. But you're ready to go out there and show everybody that you're ready to sacrifice. What are you sacrificing for deen? You can't even sacrifice your time to pray. You can't sacrifice your time to learn about Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what, you're ready to go to the streets? Don't be fooled. I swear by Allah, these people, they may remain gangsters in dunya, but I tell you, there will be no gangsters in Jannah. There will be men in Jannah. There will be women in Jannah. May Allah make us from amongst those pious men and women of Jannah. May Allah take the love, if there is any love for these horrid people away from us and from our hearts. Wallahi, no man will succeed by chilling with his friend and by disrespecting his parents. There are no gangsters in paradise.